Welcome on Kindle to another Dark Souls the Board Game painting tutorial here on Hotgates Gaming with your host James. In this video we're going to be going into a few more advanced techniques, this time painting the fabulous warrior miniature from the board game. If you are a beginner I do recommend that you go and check out our first video which was the night painting tutorial which got a few more basic techniques and in this video we're going to try and build on that. Now these videos are going down very very well. This is a more in-depth video once again but if you'd like to see a broken down shorter version just make sure that you put a like on this video add a comment below saying that you'd like to see it and if we get over a hundred comments and likes people who are enjoying this video and want to see a shorter version then I'll edit it up so without further ado let's have a little bit of a look and see how I painted this guy down in front of me Let's get started on this Warrior miniature. Now I have to say, when I first opened Dark Souls the board game, the Warrior was probably my favourite of all of the miniatures. Just an incredibly dynamic pose. And for that reason alone, he's definitely going to be my playing character when I do my first playthrough here on Hotgates Gaming. We've already washed the miniature in some detergent, just like we did for the night tutorial. The next step, again, just like the, new, the night tutorial, is of course going to be doing the base colours and the primer. Okay, so I'm going to be using a button black to do this we're gonna open up the pot stick a little bit on the end of the brush pop it on the primer mix in a tiny little bit of water there on the palette and we're just gonna apply a thin layer all over the miniature the reason why we wash it with the detergent is of course there's a releasing agent on each of the plastic miniatures which means that the paint won't stick to it unless you do this process so let's get him covered and then we'll head over to the next step and there we have it, that's our Warrior Primed Black. Now some people ask, why am I not using a spray primer? And the reason for that is because these are board game miniature pieces and plastic pieces that I haven't worked with before and I'm not familiar with. I want to make sure I get a real good feel for the miniature and don't risk clogging up any of the detail that's in them. And using a brush is a really good way of doing that. I've used a bad and Black from the Citadel paint range which of course you can purchase through Games Workshop do recommend if you want to get some local gaming store discounts get yourself over onto Element Games like I did and remember I do emphasize that it's important to apply multiple thin layers now this guy's only taken one layer of the Abaddon Black so the next stage is to apply our next coat and that's going to be doing our dry brush so once we've allowed that primer to dry, we're going to be doing the dry brushing phase. And the reason why we're going to do this now on this particular miniature is dry brushing is a relatively messy technique. You can get it around bits of the model. You don't really want to have to worry too much about covering parts of the model you've already painted with silver. Now I'm going to be using the Citadel base color lead belcher as we did with the Knights because the Dark Souls universe is very dark and grimy. So you want to get that kind of dark metal effect. Now I did go in full detail with regards to dry brushing in my night tutorial but we'll also have a little bit of a look here and we're going to be doing this mainly for the chainmail areas on our warrior miniature so I'm going to use this dry brush here slightly thicker wider brush and we're just going to move some of that paint into the end of the brush making sure that it doesn't go all the way to the nub and then we're going to wipe as much of that metal off the brush as we can for picking up our miniature and lightly on those chainmail areas on this one in particular just brushing very gently side to side now I can see that I've got too much paint on my brush there so I just need to wipe a little bit more off and then again just gently side to side over those chainmail areas and we want to make sure that we can be a little bit messy at this phase but we want to make sure that we get right into those corners and that we don't allow the silver paint to go into the gaps in the chainmail. Dry brushing is really good for picking up detail on raised areas. So we'll finish that off and then we'll come back with the next step. There we go, so once the chainmail areas have been dry brushed we're going to stick with the lead belcher and we're going to apply uh, the silver to any of the other areas that we need to such as the end of the axe weapon also the helmet and parts of the shield as well so we're gonna just gently mix in a little bit of water just a tiny bit and we're using an element game stubby detail brush here just because it doesn't need to be absolutely fine detail but we just need a bit more of a small brush head just to get in and make sure that we're a little bit neater when doing this type of paintwork so we're gonna go over the boss of the shield there and just get that silver 
So of course that's going to be up against the wood effect, which we'll cover in this video. We're going to go for the axe as well. And then we'll also be painting silver as the base color on the helmet. We'll come back when we finish this phase. There we have it, so we painted the silver areas with the lead belcher now, which include the boss of the shield, just the rim of the shield, also the axe head and the butt of the axe. Uh, we've of course dry brushed the chainmail, and I have noticed when looking at my point of reference that the helmet actually has got a bit more of a kind of bronze uh, on top of leather look, which we'll come to in a little bit. Now of course we've just used the silver paint, so we need to go and wash out our our water because of the little bits of silver uh, paint that will now be in it, and we'll move on to our next colour. So it's always important when you paint a miniature to have some form of point of reference. Some of you might have great imaginations and be able to do it off the top of your head, uh, but I like to pull up pictures and the like of exactly what I'm going to paint. So I've just typed in the Dark Souls 3 Warrior, and you can even see that the pose has been taken probably from this iconic image of him. Now, the next color that we're gonna to move to is actually gonna be his cloak, which is clearly a kind of dark red, and we're gonna do that now. Hopefully you guys out there will use this video as your point of reference for your Dark Souls miniatures going forwards. So to achieve the dark red color that we can see on the warrior cloak, I'm gonna be using the Citadel color corn red. This is quite a dark red. It dries uh, a bit darker than what you'll actually see in the pot itself. So again, we're just gonna take a little bit of this out. We don't need a fine detail brush, so I'm gonna use my stubby detail brush from Element Games. Just a little bit of paint on the end. And we're just gonna pop a little touch in the palette, add a little drop of water. Now again, red paint has got quite a strong pigment, so it's another one that I would recommend changing your water immediately after using. And as ever, it's better to do multiple thin layers. So we will probably see the black through this when we, uh, when we do it. And we're just gonna give a nice spread of the corn red here, all across the coat. We don't have to be too neat, because the furs above we will do later on uh, but we do have to make sure that what we don't do is cover the chain mail dry brushing that we've already done so there we go we're going to continue applying this this will probably take two or three thin layers and then we need those thin layers so we can keep the detail we'll come back when that's done and there we have it that's the corn red base color applied to that cloak took about two thin layers very very important I reiterate again that you keep those paints reasonably thin and you apply multiple layers so you can keep the detail and it will really make a massive difference when it comes to the shading and highlighting of the miniature whilst we wait for that to dry let's move on to a different part of this warrior so sometimes when you're painting you can just stick on one color and you can go through the whole process of putting the base color on then doing your shading and then working up through your highlights and that can be quite a satisfying way of painting but one technique that i like to do is to skip between two colors and that means that you can be waiting for one to dry whilst working on the other so now that we've done the base color of the red for the cloak we're going to be focusing on the skin and for the base color of the skin i'm going to be using the citadel paint rat skin flesh which is the base color paint um, and what you'll be able to see on the warrior is that's just going to be his hands and on the face uh, just underneath his helmet there so because these areas are a bit smaller i'm going to be using my fine detail brush here um, and we're just going to put on very thin remember the paint's just on the end of the brush we want to be quite careful when we're doing this just quite a thin coat over his hands remember we can do multiple coats if we need to i'm just going to be applying thin coats here over his hand Remember, we want to do multiple thin coats. Now, with rat skin flesh, different paints I find have got different levels of consistency. I find that the rat skin flesh as a base paint tends to be pretty thick and it tends to dry on the brush quite quickly. But at the same time, if you water it down too much, then you definitely do need to put on quite a few layers because the black base colour the primer color will show through. Um, but I'd rather put on multiple thin layers so that I don't cover the, the detail than to whack this paint on thick. So we'll come back when we've done that and we'll move on to shading. So there we go, that's the rat skin flesh applied on the hand and on the face. Trying to be as neat as possible, but remember that you are probably gonna be painting around those areas because of the sleeves and the wood for the axe handle and also for the helmet as well. So whilst we're waiting for that to dry, we're gonna go onto the shading for the cloak here. And I'm gonna be using the Army Painter shade uh, Dark Tone, which is uh, a pretty dark, 
um, shade. So I'm just going to drop a little bit of this. Make sure you shake your, your washes beforehand because you don't want your miniatures to be shiny. And I'm going to be using the Element Games Regiment brush here just to apply the wash. And I'm going to apply the wash all over uh, the cape here. And what will happen is that dark ink will settle in the recesses, creating the shade that we're looking for. What it'll also do is it'll create a little bit of a darker tone across the whole of the red. And that means that the highlighting process it's just going to be that little bit smoother. We're not going to have as stark a transition. So you can even see there whilst it's wet, um, the wash just pulls into those areas. So I'll keep doing this. It shouldn't take too long. And then we'll come back with the washes for the flesh. And before we move on, we're also now going to apply that dark tone ink to all of the chainmail areas. Because though we dry brush this, we want to create a little bit more depth again and this will just go into the little deep parts of the miniature and it will make the silver on top that we dry brush just stand out that little touch more. So we'll do that all over. Whilst we're waiting for the dark tone wash to dry on the chainmail and on the cape, let's skip back to the skin where we're now going to be applying the army painter strong tone uh, which is a lighter ink it's more of a brownie kind of ink um, and again what we're trying to do is we're trying to create some nice contrast between the base color and all of the crevices so what you'll see on a face or hands will be the gaps between the fingers and things like the eye socket and the mouth and the like so again let's give the wash a good shake so it doesn't come up shiny just a little drop on your palette and you might want to use a brush that's got a little bit of a finer tip when working on these smaller areas, especially if you painted other areas around. I haven't, so I can be a little bit more generous. And I'm just going to paint that in there. And remember, I don't want the wash to pull too much on any area. If you find that the wash is pulling, just drag it across and away from where you want The shade together and we don't want to have uh, puddles of brown ink on the face we just want to create a little bit of contrast okay so I'm now going to do that on the hand as well and on the back of the hand and then it'll be a case of waiting for these inks to dry and starting to apply the first highlight and the first highlights will simply be the base colors that we painted before but just painting those on the raised area of the miniature. So the wash has dried on the warrior's cape and as you can see it really has applied that kind of dark tone, that grunginess to it which really fits in with the Dark Souls universe. Uh, but what we need to do now is start highlighting up from that colour. And if we went to too bright a colour at this point and of course it's going to make the highlights quite stark we want them to be reasonably smooth now i could have got around this a little bit by just making sure that the ink went into the crevices but we want quite a dark red a very very dark red so the wash all over is going to help with that so i'll be using corn red again the base color from the citadel range just give it a good shake as always uh, and i'm actually going to be using the element games character brush it's slightly bigger but it's got a nice fine point um, and this will be perfect for painting slightly larger areas but still having to be neat such as on the cape so mix in a little bit of water and I'll just twist the brush to create a point at the end and what I'm going to be doing here is I'm going to just be going over any of the raised areas of the cape just real gentle and I want to make sure that I don't get any of this base color in any of the recesses. So I'm just painting over those raised areas and this is gonna help create that highlighted look that we're going for. And I'll come back when that's done. And there we go, as you can see, by just applying the Citadel Corn Red just over the raised areas, already we've created a nice highlight on there. Now we're gonna continue that, you could just leave it like this, uh, but we are gonna continue that because we're gonna get some nice sharp highlights just on the very ends. But whilst we're waiting for that to dry, of course, we are going to move on and we're gonna do exactly the same for the skin, which I'll press on with now. 
So actually, I do have some corn red left on my palette here. Um, so I'm actually going to do what I would probably normally do when I'm highlighting, which is I'm going to um, carry on until I've got the finished highlight. Uh, so because I've got some corn red there, uh, I'm now going to do a 50-50 of the base color corn red, and I'm going to be using Mephiston Red, again from the Citadel paint range, which is a slightly brighter color. It's still a base paint, so it's a bit thicker. Uh, and I want about a 50-50 mix, probably a little bit in favor of the the, um, of the corn red, the base color. And the reason why we do this is it just gives a nice smooth transition. So I'm gonna mix that together, a tiny, tiny bit of water. We don't want this paint to be thick, probably a touch more. Uh, because with this, we are just going to be touching over the very, very edges. Now you could use the dry brushing technique uh, to do this, um, but I'm just going to use the edge highlighting technique and just very, very gently touch some of those edges, those raised areas where the light is most likely to be catching and I'll come back when that's done and we'll move on to the subsequent highlight and there we go so that is the Warrior with the 50-50 of Corn Red and Mephiston Red highlight applied uh, and we're not going to wait for that to dry, we're now going to immediately go for the pure Mephiston Red just to really hit the uh, the edges. Uh, and then we'll be highlighting up again using the Citadel colour Jacaro Orange. Um, and I will dry brush that and that will be just on those very, very ends where the sun is catching. So we'll show that off now. And there you have it, looking good so far. It's uh, certainly getting there. Uh, so now we're going to mix the remaining of the Mephiston Red, which I've got in my palette here. I'm gonna be using the Citadel color, Jacaro Orange. I'm gonna be using the dry brush for this because I only want a very, very, very light, very soft edge highlight. So I'm just gonna mix that in with the Mephiston first of all. And then of course I will wipe as much of that off as I possibly can on the paper towel so you can see it's still quite ready at the moment I really want to make sure that there's not a lot of paint left on this brush so you do be thorough in wiping it off and at this point I'll just take the miniature you can see there and very 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 lightly just brush the areas where I want to get that very slight soft highlight just on those raised areas. There's a lot of detail in this cape anyway, which is gonna make this even easier. And we don't wanna overdo it with that because we don't wanna change how the base color looks. Uh, but that dry brush, it also just gives a kind of soft blend between all of the uh, all of the, the highlights as well. Uh, so now that I've done that, I'm just going to get the last little bit of Jacaro Orange, just ever so slightly. Again, get it on the end of the brush, work it off on the kitchen roll, and then just very lightly on the ends, on just that raised area there, and then just this raised area over here. Because of all the contours in this cape, it does make it really easy to get a very good kind of dry brush, dry brush effect on the highlight. So I'm just gonna brush that over there on the front. And there you have it. So I'll wash that off. Remember, because I have been using reds, it's important that I clean my water out after this. I won't be going straight to the skin after. Uh, but there you go, there you have it. So that is our Warrior's Cape. Looking pretty good so far. And not really complicated to achieve an effect like that, as long as you follow the steps. So let's move on to the skin. So back to the skin on our Warrior and we're gonna use the same techniques that we were using on the cape. And that means that we, of course, we put the base color on, we've applied the dark wash uh, and we're gonna start going up through the highlighting phases. Uh, and the paints that you'll need to do this are, again, the Citadel Rat Skin Flesh as the base color there. Uh, I'm also going to be using Ungor Flesh as the color 
that I am highlighting up to uh, for the raised areas. Um, and then just as I did with the Jacaro Orange to create a final edge highlight, uh, I'll be doing the same with a Sharpty Bone, again, another Citadel base color. Um, so let's get that rat skin flesh on the fine detail brush that I'm using. Remember, always a good idea to get your painting supplies from a local gaming store provider. I get all mine from Element Games. So check out the link in the video description below. Follow that link and you should be able to get some good local gaming store discounts for your painting supplies, which is always good. Okay, so getting a bit of water. And again, all we want to do is we want to make sure that we just pick up the raised areas. Okay, so we want to allow there to be that dark residue from the ink, the wash. We want to leave that in between and we just want to make sure that we've got a nice flat raised area which is ever so slightly lighter than the colour with the wash on and this creates those different tones and all these different tones create a nice realistic look when you're painting your miniatures. So I'll crack on with that and we'll come back with the next step. So just as a top tip when you're painting faces, the areas that you really want to pick out on as you go up through the highlights, and these highlights will get smaller and smaller and smaller, are things like the chin area, also picking out the lips which are raised. You also want to get the brow where you can, cheekbones and nose, because these are all the areas on the face where the light's going to hit the most. Um, it is much, much, much tougher painting a face that is underneath a helmet. So I do recommend that you paint the face before you paint the helmet because you are going to get skin colours and skin tones on the helmet when you're trying to get in to the little details to highlight up. As I've just done there, especially when you don't have the paint just on the tip of the brush as you should do. Um, but now that I've got those areas, we'll then go for the next highlight, which is going to be a 50-50 of the rat skin flesh uh, with the much, much lighter Ungor flesh colour that we've got here. So again, the 50-50, just like on the cloak, it just provides a bit more of a smoother transition. So when you're doing your fingers and your hands, again, just focus on the raised areas. Try not to paint completely over the base colour that you applied on before but just slightly more the edges and the uh, and also some of the more central areas you really want to get on those fingers um, especially sort of where the knuckles are where the bones are anything that's going to be catching on the light you just want to pick up with a lighter colour and again just by making sure that your paints aren't too thick and you're quite neat with this you'll create that effect that highlighted effect that we're ultimately going for here uh, exactly the same when it comes to the face we're going for the chin we're going for the nose we're going for the brows the cheekbones and the like uh, and these highlights will get smaller and smaller and finer and finer um, as we reach up to those points which have got the uh, the greatest amount of highlight on them so we'll crack on and we'll show you the finished result so there we go, that's how it's looking after we've done the highlight of Ungor Flesh. And what I always recommend doing around this kind of time is then get yourself some Sharpty Bone. Uh, and this is the one that you'll be the least generous with. And you just want to apply the tiniest little tip to things like the fingertips, the uh, the knuckles, um, and also if you've got the room, um, just a little dot maybe on the chin, the lips, the nose, um, and also the, the brows and the like. And it'll just make it pop a little bit more. Now, now one thing that we can find when you're doing these kind of skin tones is that um, if you're not able to be as neat because of something like a, a helmet it's a good idea to get a transition by using maybe a flesh colored wash um, and the one that I like to use for flesh is the uh, the Reichland flesh shade um, which is from Citadel um, so what I'll probably do is once I've got the Sharpty bone on I'll do that and then I'll see if uh, any more highlights are required uh, so let's see how that goes on and here is our warrior after so it's a Sharpty Bone highlights and also a little bit of a Reichland Flesh Shade wash just to really kind of get a little bit more of a blend and a transition. Uh, switch it off the hand there. 
And there we go. I think it looks pretty good and should certainly uh, should certainly do the job. Now, it might be something that you want to avoid doing. You can, of course, leave the uh, recesses where you had the washes, where they go around the eyes. You could you could perfectly you could leave those, and this miniature would look absolutely fine. But I think that if you can um, and can practice getting decent at doing eyes then it's a pretty good way to go so the way that we need to do that is we just need uh, the ceramite white paint here or any kind of white paint really this one's from Citadel um, from the Citadel painting range uh, and also a bad and black which we'll be using for uh, the pupils now a couple of key things when you're coming to doing eyes having paint right on the very end of the brush is key the paint does need to be ever so slightly ever so slightly runny um, but it needs to be so much at the point now a really good way of, uh, of doing this is just get it onto the palette and just drag it along drag it along and create a point a tiny 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 bit of water but you don't want it to be runny at all it's just because when you put when you put paint at the end of the brush uh, even with water what will happen is it'll immediately start to dry and that's not really what we want so straight away I'm then gonna get the point of the paintbrush and I'm just going to put it inside the corner of the eye which is closest to the nose and with that point I'm just going to drag very gently out to the side already that started to dry slightly um, but that should uh, that should do the trick there as you can see when it comes into focus uh, and then I'm going to do exactly the same on the other side. The paint will have dried on the end of that white on on the end of the brush. Now that white paint will have dried, so we need to immediately change over. Get another bit of white paint, tiny bit of water again, just so it doesn't dry too quickly. Make sure that this is right at the very tip of the brush. And then from here, again, go to the inside point of the eye. very 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 gently drag it out and that's probably done on that side as well uh, now if you do make a mistake which you know it's reasonably easy to do when you're doing this just paint back over with your flesh and go from there uh, but once we're happy that we've got a nice solid white colour we can look to paint in the pupils and some people don't like doing eyes because it can be quite easy if you're not careful uh, to make the miniature look like it's uh, you know cartoony or googly I think as long as you're willing to be patient and practice then it can really sort of finish the miniature off. So I have gone a little bit wild on this right hand side, so we'll be painting um, some skin around that, which I'll take care of now. Uh, but before I do that, I'm just gonna get the, uh, the Abaddon Black from the Citadel paint range. Um, and I'm just going to open it up, I've given it a shake already, we shake your paints, and I'm just gonna get a very tiny dot on the tip of this fine detail brush. And I'm just going to place that just on the center of the eye, a little bit closer to the nose being very 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 gentle and that's that side done so again wash off the brush if I bring him in a little bit closer you should focus I don't know if you can see that on that side. I don't think it's focusing particularly well. No, but I'll do the other side. Of course, I'm going to show you the finished miniature at the end anyway. Tiny little dot on the end of the brush. And again, we're going to do the same on this side. Just be very, very gentle. Make sure there's not too much paint on the brush. There we go. And now that I've done that, I probably just want to go around the eyes where I felt that 
I, uh, I went over a bit too much. You can see they look a little bit cartoony at the moment, uh, but that's because the white paint, I've probably gone a little bit too wide and it's gone over uh, where um, where we sort of highlighted up to uh, before. So I'm gonna go around, paint that, get that finished off, and then we'll move on to another area. There we go, that's how he's looking at the moment. Brilliant, so there he is. So it's time to move on to painting a new color. I'm gonna be focusing on the wood next. So I'm gonna be looking at the shield and also the axe shaft as well. Uh, I don't think there's any other areas of wood on there. Uh, so I'll show you how to get a nice wood effect. And we're gonna be pairing this with also painting the fur above the boots and also the fur at the uh, at the back of his, uh, at the top of his cape there. So in order to do the wood, we're actually gonna start off with the color Morn Fang Brown from the Citadel paint range. Um, and again, we're just going to apply some thin layers over the top of that uh, before doing some washes. So whilst we're waiting for the Morn Fang Brown to dry on the wood, of the uh, of the shield and also the axe as well we're going to be starting off with the fur and what we're going to be going for here is like a, a kind of gray dark gray um, gray white style fur almost like a, a wolf skin or wolf pelt kind of style fur I think it fits in with the northern warrior quite well uh, and to do that we need to get a, a good base color on there so I'm gonna be starting off with the color that I usually use to highlight black which is going to be the Citadel Eshin grey here um, and we're just going to be going for those bits over the top of the boots and also at the top of the cape so let's crack on with that. So now that we've applied the Eshin grey to the fur areas we're going to focus fully on the uh, on the wood. Uh, we will use uh, the dark tone um, from the army painter ink range which we're going to be putting all over the wood area whilst we're doing that we'll do exactly the same with the fur and then I'll show you how to create a really nice wood effect okay so I'm just gonna pop him down there over that and again you want to use a slightly bigger brush remember when you're doing your inks so I'll be using my element games regiment brush and you want to apply this quite generously over that wooded area so it really gets in those recesses don't worry about it going over the silver because the silver is yet to get its second highlight we'll be doing that as one of the last things that we do because it requires a bit of dry brushing and as you can see when you do a wash over a nicely detailed miniature that's got thin layers of paint on not thick ones it settles very nicely into all of those little recesses and the like, which when it's dried will really help us create a wonderful looking wood effect. However, on something like the axe shaft, uh, which there isn't as much detail, uh, we're going to create that ourselves with a technique that I learned from some amazing painting friends of mine, Kev Lawrence at Shadow and Flame. They are absolutely amazing, they've done tons of commission things for me in the past. They are stalwarts of the Hobbit and Lord of the Rings community. I do recommend you go and check out their Facebook page, Shadow and Flame, to see some of their work um, because they're also great at giving tips. And if you're wondering how I got to this kind of stage of painting, it was because of them helping me, giving me tips, giving me encouragement of how to uh, improve from wherever I was. Um, so we've done that now on the wood. Uh, let's do it on the fur, uh, and then I'll show you the Shadow and Flame wonderful wood technique. There we go, washes are drying nicely on the uh, on the fur as we speak, and the dark wash has dried on the wood, which is where we're going to continue on. Now, instead of going back over this now with Morn Fang like we have done with previous styles of highlighting, we're actually going to get the Citadel Colour Steel Legion Drab, which is a much kind of lighter brown, um, and I'm going to really, really thin this down quite a lot, and we're going to be using this to create contrast on the, on the wood grain. So we need a fine detail brush for this, Give the paint a good shake and again just making sure I've got paint on the tip of the brush. I'm going to pop it in the palette and then I'm going to get a reasonable amount of water. I don't want it to be too thin but I do want it to be quite thin and the reason for that is we want a little bit of um, sort of translucence C if that's a word. I'm going to take quite a lot of the paint off the brush and I'm going to just pick up the miniature here and we're going to very, very, very gently, just either side of where the where the uh, recesses are, so where the 
or where we saw the um, the ink settle in to create that nice contrast I'm just going to draw some very very faint lighter lines creating a nice bit of kind of contrast make sure that you definitely do not get any of this paint in those recesses so it's just very 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 faint lines need to water that down a little bit because already it's a very hot day today it's starting to dry at the touch so and take the paint off which means that the paint is less translucent and we want it to be translucent because that alone is going to create a nice kind of blend almost between this colour and the Morn Fang Brown so all the way down it's important that you make sure that these lines don't meet and that they're not too thick you want them to be really thin as you drag them down um, so just to show that off a little bit so far that's how it's kind of looking at the moment uh, we're going to focus on doing it on the outside of those dark lines first but then we're also going to do them down the rest of the shield and then we'll be applying another wash um, to really make everything kind of blend nicely together so again probably a bit too much on the brush there I'm just going to drag and create a very thin line down the outside and then at this point I just want to create thin lines in between the ones that I've already done very faint making sure that this steel legion drab color doesn't touch any other steel legion drab color because that will take away from the effect that we're trying to achieve it does take a steady eye this does take a bit of patience you don't have to do this you could just paint it brown and wash it but I think if you take the time to do this when you're trying to create a wood effect it makes a massive massive difference and I love doing it on not just shields but axe shafts spear shafts, lances a lot because it's these tiny little bits of ed added detail that you choose to put on which can make an absolutely mahoosive difference to the final effects of the uh, of the miniature so just to bring that in just to show you it so far so not absolutely significant at the moment it will look a lot better when we put the next wash on uh, but now I'm going to do the same with the axe shaft now of course uh, for this one what I'm going to do is do ever so slight not just straight lines but ever so slightly wavy lines going down uh, the shaft which I'll focus on doing now and we'll come back after we've applied the wash the wash that we're going to be applying is not going to be the dark tone that we used before it's going to be the uh, the medium uh, sorry the strong tone uh, which is slightly lighter so we'll do that now here we go, so we have put the strong tone over the top of uh, not just the wood effect, we've also taken this opportunity to do a little bit of that strong tone which is more of a brownie colour than the, uh, the dark tone or a, a lighter brown. What that does is it just creates a little bit more of a kind of worn look on the chain mail uh, and also on the axe head and the metal parts there as well which we will be highlighting up later. Um, so as well as doing the, uh, the wood effect with that slight wash as you can see there it's turned out nicely, it's still drying. Uh, but it is working out quite nicely uh, we've also done a little bit of that wash over the chain mail so next up we need to um, start applying highlights to our, uh, our fur area and my experience is that when you're doing fur you can't be a bit of dry brushing so remember dry brushing is a technique where we get a little bit of paint because we've already washed these areas we want to get a little bit of the eshing grey first of all the citadel eshing grey I'll stick him down there I'll just get a tiny little bit onto the brush and I'm going to really just rub this in on a piece of kitchen roll tea towel this is not a lot of excess and I'm going to very lightly just brush side to side over the top of the fur area and what that will do is it will leave the shaded areas that we used the income it will leave those underneath but it will just start popping 
those raised areas a little bit more. Now do be careful when you're doing this on the uh, on the fur, particularly on top, because what we don't want to do is start getting paint on the areas that we've already finished, such as uh, the cape and the like. So as soon as we've done that with the eshing grey, we want to start going up through the highlights and we're going to use um, one of my favourite colours, which is the grey Citadel paint Dawnstone. For those of you that have been wondering throughout the tutorial why a lot of my paints have got this kind of uh, dark spray on it, that's from when I have used the spray in the past doing the priming. Uh, so again, I'm just going to rub off that Dawnstone, or as much of it as possible, and I'm just going to very, very, very lightly brush over the top of the fur areas only. It's probably a little bit too much paint on the brush, so I'll just wipe a bit more off. And just this very, very light dry brushing will create a transition itself, which works very well with um, with fur effects. And you can do this uh, whichever colour fur that you want to go with, whether you want to go for a more brown kind of fur, or the way you want to do what I'm doing and going for a more kind of grey, a grey fur effect. So there we go. Once we've done that with the Dawnstone, we want to get a little bit of Dawnstone um, together with some white because we want to go even lighter and to do that I'm just going to mix it up in the palette I'm going to get my ceramite white whites are an interesting makeup of paint and by that I mean they can um, dry and clog up and congeal quite easy so you do have to look after them um, and again I'm just going to wipe that off I've mixed it together so it's just like a lighter grey again Make sure there's not a lot of paint on that because I don't want to overdo the highlight. It's just got to be very light, very subtle. There we go, and you can see that that's kind of coming together already. With just a tiny little bit round here to be done. I'm going to do the fur around the boots as well such a simple technique that anybody out there can use but very effective on the right part of the miniature and then to be fair looking at that I'm reasonably happy with that you could go up and do a uh, another highlight you could uh, get a bit of white in there I might actually just do that just a, a, a bit of white just on the very edges so again, I'm just going to work that into my dry brush, wipe as much of that off as I can, really important. You might think, well, what's going to happen to the paint? There'll just be the slightest amount of residue of white paint, which will just, if I just very lightly just do that bit, there we go. Just the bits which are catching the light the most, so on the outside there and on the outside there. And again, that just works nicely. You don't have to do the whole thing with that white. And. Uh, and there we go, if I bring this guy up to the camera, you can see that he is uh, he's coming together quite nicely now. And I like the idea of doing the kind of the whitey grey fur on him. I know some others have gone for sort of more, more of a beige thing, and that's because he's, the, he's a northern warrior. Um, so I thought I'd go for that more kind of grey grey style. Um, so next up, having looking at how he is at the moment, we need to work on uh, the other cloth areas um, and also uh, any of the leather areas. So I'm, I'm going to work on the leather of the helmet and the boots, uh, the belt buckles and the like, and then I'm also going to work on uh, the cloth, so his sleeves and also the uh, the cloth that goes around the top of the boots and the like. Um, and for that, for the leather, I'm going to be using Doom Ball Brown. Uh, from Citadel Paint Range, which is a kind of a ready, ready brown colour, and for the uh, for the cloth, I'm going to be using Rhinox Hide, which is a, a dark brown colour. Uh, so we'll come back after I've applied those layers. And here's how our warrior is looking after that base colour of Doomball Brown on all of the leather, including the helmet, which we're going to use that as the base, uh, and then also Rhinox Hide on the cloth area around his trousers, and also. Uh, as it comes out of his mail shirt there. So of course the next step is to wash those areas, which we will do. Um, and I'm actually going to use the dark tone for this. So the uh, the darker, almost black one from Army Painter here. Um, so we'll get straight onto that now. 
Um, and then after that, really, all we'll have left to do is just a little bit of slight highlighting on those areas, which we'll show you how to do. The wraps, um, which are underneath the kind of fur bit of the boots um, and just above the boots themselves. Um, and then, of course, we'll be looking to add the kind of brassy colours uh, and highlighting the metals as well. So we'll, uh, we'll press on with that and we'll show you as we go. So those washes are on now which is great and we don't have to overdo the highlights on some of these areas here because they're um, they're not sort of the most important parts of the miniature that uh, that need to stand out so I'll pretty much just be going back over the uh, the leathers with the doom ball brown on the leather belts and uh, and also the shoes I'm not going to do that on the helmet though because of course we're going to be going for that brass color on there uh, and then I might mix in a little bit of a red just to get a very sort of slight edge highlight on some of the browns on um, on the doom ball brown leather uh, and then on the darker patches here uh, I'll actually be putting some more fang brown on those raised areas and then doing a, uh, a lighter wash over the top of it using the strong tone um, but let's just start off with the if we get the doom ball brown and we're gonna get a little bit on the end of the brush we're going to water it down a touch and again, just focusing on the very, very, very kind of raised areas of the leather on the strapping and the belts and the like. We're just going to put some of that on there just to create that highlighted contrast between the darker tone from the washes. And then of course, this being the lighter, lighter color. And just that slight highlight will make all of the difference uh, we're going to keep that going for these before moving on to highlighting up the rhinox hide and for highlighting up the uh, the Rhinox hide, I'm actually going to go straight to the Steel Legion drab here and I'm going to rely on the wash um, to make these two colours kind of come together uh, because they are very very different kinds of colours so I'm just going to water that down on the end of the brush and then a the good thing about sort of the padded areas is I just need to just apply a tiny little bit on the top of each little square. Uh, I don't know if you can see that, but just like so. And that will just create a slight highlight all the way. Uh, it's a little bit of a more tedious job, but it'll be worth it um, once that's done. Uh, so I'll come back when I have finished it. Here we go, looking pretty good. So I've done the little uh, sort of reddish tinge highlights to the uh, to the leather, uh, and now I'm going to be doing um, another wash over the trouser area where I've gone over with the Steel Legion drab. Um, so let's stick him down there. I'm going to stay with the fine detail brush. I'm just going to put a drop of the ink on the palette, and again just with this. Uh, strong tone from army painter i'm just going to go over those trousers create a bit of a blend a bit more shading i'm going to do the same on the sleeve where i also used the steel legion drab which i probably wouldn't normally do for that kind of material but it ties in quite nicely then with the trousers the highlight itself uh, and also i'm just going to do a little bit more of that brown wash just in and around some of the leather area here just so the red doesn't look too red um, and you know applying different multiple layers of uh, washes is a good way of achieving different kinds of tones um, so now that is done I'm going to focus on the helmet and for the helmet I'm going to be using a club we want to go for a brass colour. It's one of my favourite colours, actually. It's called Balthasar Gold. It's a uh, it's a Citadel paint from Games Workshop, um, and it really is great for creating a uh, a brass kind of effect. Uh, I'm actually going to be dry brushing this over the uh, the helmet at first. I'm going to have to be careful because I don't want to get any of that. Um, on the areas I've already painted, like the fur and the like, but I think that that's going to be a really effective way of hitting those raised areas. So we're going to uh, we're going to hit that dry brush now there we go so not quite finished yet but you can uh, you can see that he really is uh, he really is coming together um, so we've applied the uh, Balthazar gold as a dry brush to the helmet um, 
which interestingly that's not how you get the uh, the complete finish the way that we're going to get the complete finish is using the rune fang steel which is a very bright silver that we're also going to be using to highlight up the lead belcher areas uh, but before we move on to that i think he's looking okay i don't know what you guys out there think uh, but i'm pretty happy but before we move on to that we are going to be uh, painting the kind of straps the linen straps that are uh, underneath the fur um, and to do that i'm going to uh, be starting off with the steel legion drab color again it just ties things in and uh, what we've been doing so far so we'll move on with that and then we'll come back with the room fang steel highlights and that'll be this miniature done until we get round to basing which will be a separate video um, which uh, which i'm sure will be coming very soon and here we have our finished warrior for Dark Souls, the board game, after those final little touches, which include that Runefang steel highlight to the metal, just a very slight dry brush on some parts of the, uh, of the chain mouth for that, and then also on the end of the axe, and also just a little bit on the shield, and a touch on just some of the edges of even the uh, the brass uh, the brass helmet. What we also did was the uh, the foot wraps. So the foot wraps were steel legion drab. We put over uh, the wash, and the wash is uh, a strong tone from Army Painter. We then did a little bit of steel legion drab just on those raised areas again, and then just uh, a very light touch up of a sharpty bone to finish the highlight. And here we go. I'm really, really pleased how this miniature has turned out, and I hope you guys out there have enjoyed watching me paint it if you have been enjoying these videos then do make sure that you support by liking the video uh, by getting involved in the conversation below and commenting on it as well and you can also support hot gates gaming by checking out some of the links in the video description below including links to element games and also uh, the hot gates gaming patreon as well which helps me do more of this type of content so now that this guy is done i I'm very, very happy that we'll be able to film the first playthrough. I've had a few games now of Dark Souls the board game and I'm reasonably confident going forward. So we'll do a playthrough and then in the long term we'll start painting some more of the miniatures from the board game and do a full-blown campaign. And there we have it unkindled, another Dark Souls the board game painting tutorial here on Hotcakes Gaming. I hope you've been enjoying the series and you've been enjoying all of our Dark Souls content so far. If you are, make sure that you of course subscribe to the channel and that you give each of the videos a like and maybe get involved in the conversation with a comment as well. Now that we've got two main playing characters done, I'm going to be aiming to get that playthrough together for you guys. So again, get behind the channel and hopefully we'll see you back here on Hotcakes Gaming for some more Dark Souls the board game content very, very soon.